Hi everyone, welcome back to Plum Mashable. So if you saw my A6 Mumsy and Bub Traveller's Notebook walkthrough the other week, you would have seen there was a couple of people who asked for a tutorial on how I made the plastic pocket. So that's what this video is going to be today, so let's just jump straight in. Okay, so I've got my fuse mat out and I've got my fuse tool heating up. So while that's doing that, I just thought I'd give you a bit more of a closer look at the pocket and what it is. <clears throat> Sorry, I've still got a frog in my throat, so if I have to do that, I apologise. Um, so these are pockets that are 11 centimetres by 14 and a half, roughly. It's a little bit smaller than that because of where my fuse lines are. But that's the general width. And then they've got these little sort of pockets or flip flaps at the top that are held down us using these little Velcro dots. So obviously there's two of them and they just fold in. That goes between the rings and there you've got your two little pockets. So they're made out of these heavyweight sheet protectors. I just bought these from Officeworks and I just love that they're a little bit thicker than the normal plastic protectors. They sort of also feel just a little bit thicker than the normal scrapbook paper, scrapbook page protectors that I was using. So I'm just going to start off with trimming these up to be what I need them to be. <clears throat> so what I like to do first is get off all the edges that are already stuck together except for one which holds everything together the whole time so I'm just going to cut off this edge first so I'm just using my trimmer because we're playing with plastic just go through it a couple of times even then sometimes a couple of times isn't enough and then I'm also going to take off this bit at the top but we're going to leave the one on the other side so that it's still being held together. So we've got our base of what we can start working with. You're then going to need a whiteboard, pe <clears throat> whiteboard pen of some kind. This is just so you can mark things without having to worry about it sticking. So we need to measure that rough 22 centimetres. And when I say rough, you just need to allow for a couple of extra mils along the way. So I always just did, when I made the other one, I did 22.2. That seemed to be enough that I could kind of work with. And it still fit in the, in the TN. Keep in mind if you're making this for a different size, you obviously have to play with the measurements just a little bit. So I'm not going to be too exact with every me measurement I do just because you'll have to play with this a little bit if you are going to alter this for another size. So always make sure, so that's the, hold on, so that's the, the width of it done. So now when I cut this in half or measure this it's going to be, 11 is going to be my center point and I can go straight down the middle. So I'm going to leave the whole height thing there at the moment though because I need the extra height to cut the, um, the flaps down but also I don't want to leave myself with not enough plastic either way. Okay so right now I've got my open end here, my closed end at the bottom. My fuse tool is just about heated up so I'm going to flip this over so I want my heated, my sorry my fused together already and right at the top and this is where we make everything start from so we want to do the bottom first and I like using both my ruler and the, the lines on my fuse mat to try and get the best straight line I can. Now I've been playing with my fuse tool a little bit lately I've been watching a couple of YouTube videos so I think I've come up with a way that I can fuse this without it all falling apart so this is the way that I've been doing it. So I always just give it a bit of a rub along the mat just to make sure that the wheel's loose. I always want to stick it on my hand to see if it's hot, but I've learnt don't do that, so I'm not doing that. So you're just going to start really slowly, start just off the mat on the ruler, and then just roll along. So you want to do it, and it's not sticking, it's doing it again. So you're just going to make sure you push down hard enough that it starts to roll, and just continue along at that slow steady pace all the way along. So you've got your first fuse and what you're going to do is you're going to flip it over and you're going to fuse back the other way. So I think the reason it didn't used to work for me is that 
I was only fusing it on one side so it didn't always push all the way through. So this seemed to work when I did it the other way so other times so I'm hoping it's going to work again. So again just going slow and steady along that line. And then you should have a well fused, yay, line. And a straight line, which is even better. So then what you're going to do from there is you want to go up the other side. So the way I like to do it is just by lining that up on the line on one side and then going up this bit. This is why we left a little bit extra in your measurements. So I'm just going to go ahead and do both sides and then we're going to come back and do the middle. got your two edges on your bottom done so what you want to do then is find the center point between the two so it should be somewhere about 11 in this case I've actually gone to 21 and a half uh, about there so you can do it two ways either fold it over and actually mark it where it is or do the fold thing can see that line there is about where you want to go so you can go all the way up that's the easiest way if you want it to be exactly perfect don't have to be perfect though that's the fun part so you just then want to go straight up the middle like I said you can measure if you want to but if you're happy to go with eyes like I generally am I don't like going up and down as much my fuse tool doesn't like me going up and down quite as much as it likes going side to side but. So then we're going to flip it over and go side to side this time much easier the good thing is too because that's given that little raise thing the ruler will always sit exactly neck like under it so you know you're going to be straight go so now you've got your two sections very easy so before we start fixing the lids I'm just going to cut off the excess on the bottom here so you just want to make sure that you're not going to accidentally cut any of it and then just a couple of times so the plastic gets cut there we go perfect Okay, so now you need to measure how tall it is. So for me, that's 14. I think it's 14, 14 and a half. 14 exactly. So I'm going to measure my 14 and just put a little mark on the side where that is. And I'm going to do that on both sides. And then you need to find the shape of whatever it is you want to be the shape of your lid. So you can do that as a glass, so it can be a round one, it can be a square one, so you can just have it like just a square and it can fold down. I like the round, I think that looks kind of cool. So I'm just going to line this up just so I can see where my midpoint is. So it's just here. I'm actually just going to use the tape here that I've got as my little shape. I'm just going to draw that. It doesn't have to be, well, it probably needs to be a little bit darker than that, but you just want the general gist of it. It doesn't have to be the perfect shape. This is a really old pen. It doesn't tend to work for more than just dots. Obviously you only want one side of this, not both sides. So you need to cut, this is where it's a little bit of fun. 
So I'm going to cut off the fusing at the sides just so that I've got a bit more room with it. And that just means that then that's going to fold where I want it to. Just be gentle though because it can, when you pull that little bit off, it does sometimes break the bit you've already done. So with the edge you want, you want to go up and around, just getting that general shape. Now it's hard to see because it's clear, so I'm hoping you guys can sort of get the idea of what I'm doing. And then you do the same thing on the other side. I'm trying to keep this one down so you guys can see a bit easier. And then you just need to cut off the excess in the middle. And we'll tidy this up again in a minute so don't stress that it looks a little bit crappy. I will fix it. So then we get to cut along the back here and this is probably the hardest part because you need to pull a little bit down here you need to try and get this as straight as you can so I like to fold it that way you've got that fold line as sort of your guide and I've just had a thought I'm just going to see if this works. I don't think it will, but I'm going to try. No, it might. So what I've done is I've flipped, I flipped the lids so that they're underneath. I can see them both there. I've got my fold line exactly on my line, and we're going to cut this down. You shouldn't have to cut too many times because it's only one bit of plastic. Cut a little bit, but actually I'm okay with that. So then, so we've got our little lids now. They're going to flip over like that. So it's got a little bit of, a little bit of damage to some of these bits. So I'm just going to really gently score or re-stick them down. Fuse, not score, fuse. I knew what the word I was looking for was. So I'm just grabbing a tissue and I'm just rubbing off any of the black marks. Some of them are going to be on either side so you just have to make sure you do both sides. There is a tinsy little bit of damage on this one but not enough for me to actually worry about so I'm okay with this. So then you need to grab your little adhesive dots. So these are JR Burroughs ones that I got from Officeworks and what you want to do is decide which one you want to be, like do you want the soft one to be at the top or the bottom one it doesn't really matter so I'm just putting that in the middle and then you want to grab the other one and stick that on there and try and get your finger off and then when you fold this over it's going to stick exactly where you want. So double check that it's on the right side. That's a mistake I've made before. And then fold it over. The plastic will fold. It will become a really good fold along like the more you use it as well. So score along there as easy or as hard as you can with your fingers. Go. And there you have your little tea and pocket. The same thing with the plastic, you can score, like rub that along the actual line that you've scored, that you've fused down. So you see that's going to lift up. I'm just going to grab, I've got a couple of things of stickers here. These are just lime and water ones, but so you can put those in there. These ones in this side. Oops, not that one because it doesn't fit. And then we can easily grab this, grab our spare string at the back here, and that goes straight in there like that. 
If you wanted to, you could do this one as well. Have two of them on the same string. So you've got four little pockets. You can alter them so you can have them around the other way if you wanted to so that you can have, hold on, I'll show you what I mean. You can have them around this way so that the pockets open both on the inside. Then you've got like a dash, you could have like a postcard or something in there and then you've got two pockets there, whichever you like. And I just think they're really useful for TNs. Like you can even, there is a way you could even, and I haven't quite worked it out, I have to think about the maths and the bits and pieces. But I'm sure there's a way I can make these for a ring bound one as well. So perhaps that's something I can do when I get back. I can have a think about it while I'm away and make up a way to make this pocket if you are a ring person instead of a string person. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this little tutorial on how to make these pockets. They're pretty cheap. They're pretty easy. You need a fuse tool, obviously. Um, if you don't have a fuse tool, though, something I was thinking, you could make this with a sewing machine and you could sew where I fused. Um, that's another sort of option. If you have a sewing machine, perhaps instead of a fuse tool, um, but reasonably simple to do, just need to think your way around it. But I'd love to see if you do make these, let me know how you've done it. Um, I'd love to see the finished products. Make sure you tag me in any recreations on Instagram or on Facebook. Please give this video a thumbs up if you did enjoy it and don't forget to be subscribed to see other videos just like it. Hope you guys have an absolutely fantastic rest of your day and I will see you again in my next video. Sending lots of huggles. Bye.